EMG up in front of me on the screen. And there's a reason for it. I'll get that in a moment. Ten cards there. Tavern.game slash Gygax. Takes you the Humble Bundle. Huge assortment of, uh, including some uh, Gygaxian works from Gary himself. Also from Luke and Ernie uh, and others that are associated with Gygax and have published with him. So it's a good, it's a good bundle and help support this channel. So 10 cards there. Tavern that game slash Gygax. So why do I have the 1E DMG up in front? I want to ask my listeners, my viewers, a question. I, I, I'd love to see it in the comments. Um, actually, I, I'd love to even uh, hear about it. So here, up on the screen, you can leave a voicemail. I'll try to get these voicemails actually up on the show. Why not? So. Here's how I came into gaming. It was winter of 79, 1980. Actually, I think it was probably the uh, Christmas break. So literally at the end of 79, 80, my friend Kenny. Who, by the way, when you look at gamers as a general rule, general, generally gamers are often overachievers. So Kenny's my age, 57. And he has been in his career, uh, high school teacher, a lawyer, currently a doctor, medical doctor. So um, overachiever, we shall say. That break, that winter break, I was over at Kenny's house. And we used to play board games like Life and other stupid shit, or we would play on the Intellivision. And this time, he goes, I've got a new game. Now, Kenny was going to parochial school, Catholic school. I was going to public school. We had been in uh, the same class for four or five years in public school before he went to Catholic school. And Kenny's like, this is a new game. Dungeons and Dragons. And he shows me the Dungeon Master's Guide. It was the only book he had. And he ran me through a one-person session. I don't remember much about this. I created my fighter. His name was Cyrus. I've told the story before, but named after Cyrus Vance, the Secretary of State. Don't ask me how I was so politically astute at the age of 13 back in 1979, 1980, but for some reason that name stuck with me. So my fighter's name was Cyrus. And he destroyed skeletons and giant rats in a dungeon. And I was hooked. Now, Kenny learned this from other kids his age. And I am learning through my own experiences is that if generally speaking, general rule, if you came into gaming in those formative years, the late 90s, either with AD&D or many people with one of the basic sets, you don't have a wargaming background. There's a reason for we bring this up. But if you came in older, okay, if you came in as a high school student back in a junior or senior high school student, 17, 8, 16, 17, 18, in 74, 75, with the release of the white box, you likely, or, or you were in college, you likely progressed from war game. And there's this little thing, because many of us were around since damn near the beginning in gaming, and I never experienced that war gaming aspect. Never encountered a player in those days, I have conventions, obviously, but in those days, people my age were universally introduced by friends, occasionally by an older brother. But whether it was my group in the Poconos, 
which everybody learned to play D and D in middle school, um, or if it was my New York group, where people were introduced by friends. Now I've heard the stories of you know parents that bought these rules for their kids and then ran them through sessions. And I was blessed that, again, Kenny introduced me to gaming, introduced me to my love of RPGs. So that following summer, the summer of 1980, that beginning of school break, uh, I his grandmother had a place in Belmar, New Jersey, by the shore. And I got to spend four or five days out there. And Kenny had the Dungeon Master's Guide, and I ran that, read that thing front to back, middle to end, uh, constantly during those four days. And then my mother and father, but let's be honest, it was my mother, but she was the one that was paying more attention to what I wanted, bought me the player's handbook, the DMG, and a set of dice. And I was hooked. She ne my mother's never gained. My father's never gained. My sister, you know, normal thing. She was four years younger than me, so of course she dragged her as an extra player. And she had no desire to play. Which actually makes me look back and say, how many players did I introduce to gaming? And honestly, aside from my wife, nobody. Every gamer that I met in my formative years of gaming was a gamer when I met them, was a tabletop RPG player. Now, all of us had Commodore 64s, so we all were enjoying the gold box games and telling our stories and all that stuff. But each of us came into this with no background in war games. But we were younger, younger at the time. We're all old now. But these are all people that were 13, 14, 10, 12. Yeah, no, they got, we got introduced directly into RPGs. And I would gather them to say that if you are somebody who was currently in your 60s, you came into gaming earlier, you were likely introduced by, if you came into gaming, uh, if, if you're in your 60s now, okay, 65, you came into gaming eight years before I did, that'd be seven, you came into gaming before, before D&D. &D. You were there when D&D &D got released, or shortly thereafter. So yes, likely wargaming is in your your genes, and your background. But for those of us, there's a discussion going on. It's like, oh, well, no. I, and we, we can only talk from our own perspective, right? But I'm listening. And I'd like to know how you got into gaming. Who introduced you? Did you just see it in some you know, hobby store being played or at a library? Were kids playing it at school? And you said, hey, I want part of that? Did somebody say, hey, do you want to play? That's how it happened to me. You know? Did your parents say this? Is, hey, I heard good things about these rules. Most of them. And then they introduced you to gaming that way. Or did you, some people are introduced by their parents. Tell me, whether it's in the comments or where you leave a voicemail. The voicemail number is 347-509-5168. You can use that whether you're watching this video on the YouTube, the Rumble, Spotify as a podcast, 347-509-5168. Let us know. I'd like to do an episode of just hearing your stories. You know, this is your channel. Let your story be heard. You know? So on that note, uh, live stream tomorrow night, 8 p.m. I don't know if we have a special guest or not. It's been one of those weeks on my end. Uh, other than that, be safe, be well. God bless. Roll those dice, roll them well. Remember, we're going to be transitioning over the next couple of weeks to an away from StreamYard 
Jamie Art can go themselves. Uh, we are going to be uh, experimenting with other layouts, other formats. So don't be shocked if things look a little bit differently. I expect they're going to look a lot better in the end. So catch you all later. Thank you so much. God bless. Be safe.